Hey, family, come on in, image bearers. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. Come on in the room on this amazing Good Friday. Today is Good Friday. And of course, on Fridays, we do our Life After series. So if you're new, you may be, you may be asking, well, life after what? Well, life after trauma, life after abuse, life after divorce, life after whatever your life after is, life after loss. I am here to encourage you today that there is life after and you can live again. You can live again. You can get up again. You can rise above your pain and heartache, the pain from your past, the pain from the loss, the pain from the divorce, the pain from the abuse and the misuse. I promise you, you can rise. I'm a witness. I'm a living witness, amen, and a living testimony that we can rise again, amen, and that there is life after Amen. So be encouraged in that today that God has not forgotten about you. I just feel it in my spirit that some of you feel like God has forgotten about you. You feel like God has overlooked you. You feel like, listen, I'm so used to being neglected and rejected, right? And I feel like God has neglected and rejected me, but no, the devil is a liar. God never rejects us. God never neglects us. Amen. God is always for us and he's never against us amen god is forever present in our lives amen even though sometimes we may not feel it we may not feel his presence but no he's there he promised to never leave us or nor forsake us so he promised to never leave you nor forsake you he promised to never leave me nor forsake me amen so be encouraged in that amen and so listen, I am Pastor Carolyn, your pastor and purpose pusher of Tears of Breakthrough Ministries and Conference. And my ministry is primarily, and I say primarily because we do have some men, amen, but, but primarily my ministry is to serve women who are starting over after trauma. And listen, I'm just telling you, I believe we all have experienced some type of trauma. Some may be worse than others, but we've all experienced some type of trauma, right? Especially because we, what we've even gone through over the past few years with the, with the pandemic, right? And, and, and there's so many people are struggling, amen? And so, listen, I am here to serve you, and I'm here to encourage you that there is life after struggle right and so today we're because it's good friday we're going to talk about the crucifixion we're going to talk about the resurrection amen and we're going to talk about forgiveness and i do understand that for some of you forgiveness may be so far in the future you may be thinking i'm not even there where i can forgive them for what they did to me right and and, and i get it because forgiveness is a process it's a process and for some of you it may be too fresh for you you to even go there but, but I'm a living witness that you can forgive. And when you forgive, right, you're not forgiving them to make their life easier. Absolutely not. You're forgiving them because, well, first and foremost, you're forgiving them because um, Jesus clearly said, if, you, if, listen, if we don't forgive, our father in heaven cannot forgive us, right? And we know that we all have fallen short. So we want our heavenly father to forgive us we don't want to block our blessing let me just tell you something i've had all I done, i've been through all kinds of abuse and misuse okay and i refuse to allow anybody to block my blessings because i'm gonna because i'm not gonna forgive i do forgive amen but i do understand that it's a process okay so i'm not saying you're gonna forgive overnight because it really is a, a process and and then not only that but you have to heal first and, you know, we talk about that all the time, how we have to deal with our stuff so that we can heal from our stuff. Like we have to first deal in order to heal. So then in that process, in your healing process, a part of your healing process is forgiveness, right? So, so just keep that in mind. A part of that healing process is forgiveness. Now, you don't want to put yourself in harm's way. Forgiveness does not mean we put ourselves in harm's way so that we can be hurt again. Forgiveness does not mean that we have to always reconcile. So forgiveness does not mean reconciliation because I think some of you think that's why, you, that's why you're thinking you can't forgive because you think that, that's telling the person that hurt you that, okay, now we have to reconcile. No, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. Now, sometimes forgiveness can mean reconciliation, 
but not always. I've forgiven people who have hurt me. I've forgiven people who have abused me and misused me. And I have not rekindled that relationship because it's toxic for me, but I have forgiven them. And the reason I forgave them is so that I can free myself to live my best life, amen, now. So that I'm not stuck in the past, but I'm living my best life and my blessed life now that I want to encourage you to do the same. Amen. So I'm free. I am free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Who the sun sets free is free for real. So if you really want to be set free, you're going to have to practice forgiveness. Amen. So we're going to talk more about that. But let me just read for you. We're going to be in Luke. I'm going to start out in Luke 23, verses 33 through 35. That's where I'm going to start. The crucifixion. Right, and we most of us know the story. We are familiar with what they did to Jesus. First of all, Jesus was betrayed. Some of you have been betrayed. Jesus was abused. Amen. They beat him. Right? Listen, I lived through domestic violence. I know what it's like to be beaten. So they beat him severely. They and as much as hard as it was for me to live through what I lived through, they really that Jesus, it, believe it or not, it was even worse for Jesus what they what they did to him right they spat on him they they beat him I mean they whew, I mean they they just did it I don't know if any if you've ever seen the movie the passion of the Christ it really gives a, a pretty good depiction of how they brutalized Jesus right before he even got to the cross right they didn't just put him on the cross they brutalized him they tortured him they beat him right so Jesus, Jesus can relate to our pain. He can. He absolutely can. So let me just start reading at verse 33. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him. We're talking about Jesus here. Along with the criminals, right? So one on his right and the other on his left. So he, they crucified him between the two thieves, the, the two criminals, right? Verse 30. Four says, then Jesus said, now listen what Jesus said. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. Jesus forgave them, right? Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. And I apologize, my dog snores and she's right here next to me snoring, okay? So, so if you hear a weird sound, that would be her, <laughs> amen. So anyway, so, and they divided his garments by casting lots. And then verse 35 says, the people stood watching. So, so there was an, an audience. There, there were people watching this, watching him being abused, watching him being uh, uh, crucified, right? They, they were watching, the people stood watching and the rulers snared at him saying he saved others let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one, right? So they were, they were mocking him, right? They were mocking him. Well, if he is who he say he is, then let him save himself. He's up on that cross. Let him, let him save himself. How many have mocked you? Right? If you, if you are who you, I know I've had people mock me. Oh, you, you, you say you're a pastor. How, how are you a pastor? How, you know, you, listen, people will throw your past up in your face right? So they mock Jesus, right? But what we're going to zoom in on here is, is, is verse 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. So I want to also, so we're going to come back to that, but on Good Friday, I love going to church where they do the seven last words of Jesus. So I just want to give you the seven last words of Jesus. And then we're going to zoom back into the forgiveness piece, right? So the seven last words of Jesus, first and foremost, we know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Some translation says his only begotten son. That whoever, whoever, doesn't matter who you are, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's everlasting life, right? And so now here is the seven last words of Jesus while he's up on the cross. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. That's Luke 23, 34. 
And then he said, today you will be with me in paradise, Luke 23, 43. And then behold your son, behold your mother. And then my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So Jesus is on the cross. He, he's feeling forsaken in that moment in that moment and some of you feel forsaken you, you've been in that thing for so long you just feel like god has left you forgotten you right so in the moment jesus says my god my god why have you forsaken me then he says i thirst i thirst because they had him out in the heat right up on that cross in the heat can you just imagine? He says, I thirst. And then he says, which is so powerful, it is finished. And so we're supposed to live in the finished work of Jesus, right? Jesus says, it is finished. And then finally, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Father, I commend my spirit. Amen. So those are the seven last words of Jesus at the crucifixion on the cross. Now, we're going to zoom in and we're going to focus on today this part. Amen. Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Because we are commanded to forgive. We are commanded to forgive. Doesn't mean we agree with what they said. Doesn't mean that we agree with what they did. Doesn't mean that it was not horrible or uh, horrendous, abusive. It does, it, you know, it doesn't mean that. It just means that you have to free yourself from the bondage, from the, the, the bondage of that pain. Amen. And, and I promise you, that there is purpose behind your pain. I'm a living witness. After everything I went through, <clears throat> I've lived through loss, I've lived through abuse, I've lived through divorce, I've lived through, uh, I could go on and on and on, but we don't even have time today, right? So I'm a witness that you can get to the other side. I'm a witness that there is life after all of that pain, all of that trauma. There is life after, amen? But you know, you have to surround yourself with like-minded people that can support you and lift you up on those days where you just you just feel like you can't go, you can't get through it. People who can pray for you, people who can lift you up and encourage you and speak life into you and over you in those moments where you have those bad days. Because you know, especially if you live through abuse, we do have bad days. Okay. We sometimes we have bad days, right? But we don't stay down, we get up. We don't stay down, we get up. That's for somebody out there. You're not going to stay down. You're going to get up. Yeah, they may have knocked you down. They may have beat you down, but you are going to get up. Because guess what? After they did everything they did to Jesus, after they spat on him, after they abused him, after they beat him to a pulp, literally, they thought they killed him. They, they thought he was dead. They thought they were done with him. But guess what he did? He rose. Hallelujah. He rose on the third day. And when he rose, he rose with all power in his hands. And just like Jesus rose, amen, you too can rise above your situation. You too can rise above the circumstance and the hurt and the pain. You too can rise. Stay in the game. You have to stay in the game in order to win it. You have to stay in the game in order to win it. You can't win it if you get out of the game. Some of you want to Throw in the towel. Don't throw in the towel. Stay in the game so that you can win it. Win this race called life. Life can be hard, right? It can be, right? But Jesus says, forgive them for they know not what they do. So I want to give you some other. I want to read something that someone well, I'll do that later. I'll do that for a second. I want to. I have. A, I had this book, and I want to talk to you about forgiveness because it gives me. Um, it's called the Forty Days to Total Forgiveness. Forty Days to Total Forgiveness. I don't know if you can see it by R. T. Kendall, and I just want to read something that I 
that I always said, but he kind of breaks it down a little bit more. Um, second. So basically he's saying here, he's giving you three different uh, types of forgiveness, okay? Three categories. So I wanna read that to you. Um, the first one is detached forgiveness, det detached forgiveness. And it says where there is a reduction in negative feelings towards the offender, but no reconciliation. Now, remember when I said just because you forgive, that doesn't mean that you have to reconcile, especially if it was a toxic relationship, if it was an abusive relationship, right? You don't want to put yourself in harm's way. Right. So, so number one is detached forgiveness. And that's where there is a reduction in negative feelings towards the offender. So you have these negative feelings towards the offender, but there's no reconciliation that takes place, but you forgive them in your heart so that you can free yourself to live your best and blessed life. Amen. And then number two is limited forgiveness limited forgiveness. And what is limited forgiveness? It says, where there is a reduction in negative feelings towards the offender and the relationship is partially restored, right? So, you know, you know, you may, that doesn't mean you, fit, you, you, you totally sever the relationship. It just means that, you know, occasionally, like I know for me, I, I do, uh, know some people that I have, they've done me wrong and I've forgiven them. And when I see them, I, 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 I say, hi, I speak, right. Um, but I don't really hang out with them. I don't, right. But I'm cordial when I see them. I'm respectful when I see them, amen? So limited forgiveness is where there is a reduction in negative feelings towards the offender and the relationship is partially restored. Though there is a de decrease in the emotional intensity of the relationship. So yeah, you may, they, you know, you may call the person over the phone or they may call you. I've had people that have hurt me, that have called me and asked me for favors and the Lord has led me to help them and I help them and that's it. But again, um, you know, uh, we, we don't hang out together. We don't, we don't. And then of course there is full forgiveness, full forgiveness where there is a total, um, where there, where, where there's there, this this negative feelings towards the person, the, the offender, and the relationship is fully restored. So, you know, you, there, there's still some residue. But there's always residue when people get wrong, right? But you've forgiven them, and, and you may have reconciled, and you may hang out together occasionally. Um, yeah, right. So, what I like to do is journal. I wanna I want encourage you to journal these three, um, detached forgiveness, who, who have you developed a detached uh, uh, forgiveness towards, right? And, and, and then there's limited forgiveness. Who is that person that you have limited forgiveness for? And then the full forgiveness where you have actually reconciled with that person. Who is that person that you have totally reconciled the friendship or the relationship, could be a family member, whoever it is, right? And, and you know, uh, but you've learned how to set boundaries though, but you, you fully reconcile the relationship, right? But either way and, and, and wherever you fall in this, forgiveness is necessary. Jesus says, uh, if we don't forgive, our father in heaven cannot forgive us, amen? So if you wanna be forgiven, if you want to not block your own blessings, then you must forgive. You must forgive those who have done you wrong. And we have to ask that the Bible actually even says we have to pray for those who have despitefully used us, right? And some of this sounds crazy and foreign to some of you who, um, some of you get it and some of you may never get it. But 
Um, some people, I know people who are totally miserable because they don't forgive. And not only that, but there has also, there's actually um, disease that, and, and certain cancers that are attached to unforgiveness. So people who um, are very unforgiving and they live their life, I've seen people like that, that I will never forgive her. I will never forgive him. And, and it really hurts you more than it hurts the person that you, that, that, that had the offender, right? Um, the abuser, the misuser, right? It, 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 you holding on to that, harboring that unforgiveness hurts you more than the person that hurt you. Because chances are they have moved on. They're, they're probably out there, they forgot all about you. They're out there hurting somebody else and you're still holding on to what they said or what they've done to you. And so every time you hear their name, you tense up, your heart rate, is, is 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 your heart's beating faster your blood pressure is up so who do you think you're hurting do you really think you're hurting them you're hurting yourself so you need to set yourself free today amen jesus came to set the captives free amen and who the son says free is free indeed who the son says free i like to say is free for real so if you want to be free for real then you have to forgive and again i do understand that for some of you it may be a little more difficult because it may be fresh the, 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 the offense may be fresh. And so it's, it's going to take you some time and that's okay too. That's okay because it is a process. It is not something that happens overnight. Amen. So know that. And so I'm not going to keep you long, but I do want to close out with this. Amen. Just declaring and decreeing because as we declare a thing and decree a thing, that thing shall be established. Hallelujah. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we grieve that the torture and the sorrow that Jesus endured on the cross for us. Hallelujah. It was, but it was necessary, Lord God. It was necessary for humanity, Father. And so we thank you. Hallelujah. You, you didn't want us to be enslaved to fear, anxiety, or sin. So you sacrifice for us, Jesus. Hallelujah. You sacrifice us, sacrifice for us, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Just say thank you. Say, I thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice. I thank you, Jesus, for the finished work. Hallelujah at the cross. We thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice. Hallelujah. You sacrificed yourself so that we could win. We, you sacrificed yourself, Jesus, so that we could win. Hallelujah. Yes, God. And so it's your love, Jesus. It's your love that hung upon the cross and gave up everything to rescue us. He gave up everything to rescue you. And he gave up everything to rescue me. Hallelujah. And it's finished because you said on the cross, Jesus, that it is finished. Hallelujah. It is finished. That was a cry of victory because you, Jesus, defeated everything that held us in captivity. Hallelujah. Jesus already defeated everything that would hold us in the captivity. Hallelujah. So we no longer have to be bound to our past hurts. We, have, we no longer have to be bound to the user and the abuser and the misuser. Hallelujah. To the haters and the naysayers. We don't have to be bound to our pain. We don't. We can forgive. Hallelujah. And so because you've done what you've done, Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Because of your sacrifice, we can experience intimacy with you forever, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, show us how to share your love throughout the earth, Lord God, and become the change agents that you have called each and every one of us to be, Lord God. You told us to go into all the world, Lord God, and we can do that now, even through social media. So we thank you, Lord God, for the finished work. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For the finished work on the cross. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I just want to declare a decree. Isaiah 53, 5. Hallelujah. But he was I declare and decree, hallelujah, that he was pierced for our transgressions, hallelujah. He was crushed for our iniquities, hallelujah. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, hallelujah, and by his wounds, hallelujah. Which is how, how many of you are still wounded, hallelujah. By his wounds, we are healed. Whatever the wounds are, hallelujah, I declare your healing today. 
by his wounds, hallelujah, according to Isaiah 53, 5, we are healed. And, and, and for those of you who have joined my book club, um, our kingdom breakthrough, uh, I, I'm sorry, our kingdom, um, our queendom uh, um, purpose lounge and academy, right? We are doing a book club. We have a book club now. And so we've been reading my kingdom breakthrough for the wounded soul. Amen. Because we're breaking through those wounds. Amen. We're break, we're breaking through those wounds. We're healing those old wounds. Amen. And then we're also reading uh, 40 days of total forgiveness. Amen. So these are the two books that we are using for the um, book club this month. Amen. And we are healing those old wounds. Many of you, you know, if you think about a wound and somebody uh, and you put a bandaid on it, right? And then somebody come up and rip that bandaid off, that thing hurts. And that's what's happening to many of you. That's what's happening. You're triggered because people keep ripping that bandaid off. And every time they rip that bandaid off, then you react because you're still wounded. And so I declare your healing today. I, I declare your healing today. Hallelujah. Because his wounds, hallelujah. Yes, God. He was crushed. I'm going to start from the beginning, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds, we are healed. And so I declare your healing today in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree that you are healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And finally, Lord God, I speak a third John blessing over everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray above all things that we will prosper, be in health, even as our soul prospers in Jesus' name. It's time to forgive. I want to encourage you to get your journal and write down those names of people that you need to forgive and, and, and go through the three categories that I, I mentioned earlier and see where they fall into and be honest with yourself about it, right? Because it's time for healing. And then join us in our Kingdom Academy, our Kingdom, um, I'm sorry, our Kingdom, I keep saying Kingdom, our Kingdom, because we are Kingdom, amen, our Kingdom Purpose Academy and join our book club, right? We meet, we hold each other accountable. We intercede for each other. We are our sister's keeper, amen. And we're all healing together. So God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna, we're gonna go over um, to Clubhouse now. Well, I'm, I'm gonna finish on Clubhouse. So this is uh, YouTube and Clubhouse, right? And then I'm gonna post this on Facebook, but we're gonna be on Clubhouse Live, amen. So come on over to Clubhouse and we can finish this conversation. You enjoy the rest of your uh, good Friday. I will see you next time. God bless. Have a good day. Don't forget to be encouraged and not discouraged in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. This is Pastor C, Pastor Carolyn, your pastor and purpose pusher. I'll see you over in Clubhouse, those of you who are following me over. God bless.